So good afternoon, everyone. My name is Stephen Andrews. I'm actually a second year resident doctor based at the MITRE Hospital in Brisbane, Australia. Um, and I'll be starting dermatology training next year. Um, on behalf of Dr. Jim Muir and the Australian College of Rural and Marite Medicine, or ACRAM, Teledome uh, National Teledermatology Team, I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to speak today to present this service. So over the next 10 minutes, I'd like to give you a brief or whirlwind tour of Teledome National, which is a program that's been running nationwide now in Australia and is currently in its 12th year. So for those of you who have been to or know of Australia, you'll know that it's a vast country. We have a population of around 24 million people, around 90% of whom live in capital city or in a regional areas, shown as either red or yellow on the map here. The remaining 10% of our population is basically spread outwards from these areas in a graded fashion across the land. Now, frontline medical care in regional and remote Australia is generally provided by generalist doctors based either in small public hospital outpatient departments or publicly subsidised private general practices or may even be provided by visiting primary healthcare services such as the Royal Flying Doctors Service, depending upon the size of the town. The reality is though that for patients who live in these parts of the country, patients who require a specialist assessment, they may need to travel for hours, days, many days each way to obtain a face-to-face -face specialist consultation. And this doesn't take into account the waiting time, which can be weeks to months. And dermatology, quite generally, is down the long end of that spectrum. And although this situation poses many challenges for patients, it's also similarly difficult for these doctors outside of the major urban centres to access collegiate specialist support and ongoing medical education. So to help address some of these issues, in 2003 to 2004, ACRAM implemented Teledom National, an online store and forward teledermatology service that's offered through rural and remote medical education online, affectionately known as Romeo, which is their online medical education portal associated with the college. Enrolled medical students, members of ACRAM, as well as doctors practicing in areas without a local dermatology service can apply for free access to the program. The service is consultative in nature and provides advice on cases submitted by treating doctors to a de-identified secure forum environment. Particularly unique, we believe, to uh, this particular service, however, is that all cases can be viewed by all enrollees so that everyone can learn from the discussion. The program is federally funded and it's free to use for the referring doctor and their patient, and the patient remains under the care of their GP at all times. More recently, representing the West Coast, Dr. Rachel Foster, a dermatologist with uh, a paediatric sub-interest, was added to the roster in very early 2015. And even more recently, Dr. Dan Kennedy, a plastic and reconstructive surgeon, has also started some new facilities in the program too, but I'll talk about those in a few minutes' time. Education is a core tenant of the program and it strives to provide a unique educational opportunity for uh, program subscribers. Separate to the main case forum, which is the cornerstone of teaching, there are a raft of educational re resources that have been compiled over the years, most of which are based upon real submissions to the program. The philosophy is not only to help GPs with patient-specific issues, but help them think about the diagnostic, investigative and management process so that these skills can be conferred again to their patients in the future. I'll also go over some of these a little more in a minute. So for the main submission envi environment, to submit a case, an enrolled GP obtains their patient's consent. To access the forum, a GP every time needs to go through an agree, disagree, uh, pro forma where they acknowledge the fact that they need to obtain their patient's consent and a pro forma is, advised, uh, is uh, provided to give to and to go through with their patient. Their patient agrees to have their de-identified photo and clinical history uploaded to the service and the patient acknowledges that they've seen the images and they agree for these images to be uploaded. They agree that they've had the option of being referred to a face-to-face -face consultation if they prefer. And they also agree for their case to be used 
online as part of this site for medical education purposes. This is optional, but in over 12 years, no one has refused to take part. A new thread is created as part of this forum for each case. The dermatologists are notified when a thread is submitted and the GP can have the option of receiving an SMS when a response is received from one of the dermatologists. Now, broadly speaking, the service has grown over the years, but uptake, uptake was seen rapidly from its first inception. But over the last few years, we've seen in the order of 400 cases per year. And since that extra dermatologist was ad added to the roster last year, we've noted that over the last financial year, we've probably seen about a 20% increase in referrals to the program, perhaps more because there's better awareness now in the West Coast. However, just stepping back in 2012, an audit was done of all the cases submitted to the program from January 2012 to January 2013 that looked in the scope of the operation of the, pro of the program. At that point in time, with one dermatologist, the average time from submission of a case to a response from the dermatologist was found to be five and a half hours, averaged over the whole year, 24-7. And almost all cases were responded to within 24 hours. Some form of practical advice was given in the majority of cases and few were referred on for face-to-face -face consults. In terms of the length of each interaction, the majority of threads, around 50-55%, were limited to two posts, so a call for help and a response from the dermatologist. The conversation would go on, the next 30% would probably be up to about four or five interactions, and then the remaining 10-15%, the conversation would go on depending on how complex the case was, and particularly if an outcome was provided. Additional information was requested by the dermatologist in about 65% of cases, but in less than half of these instances, this was actually provided by the referring doctor. By virtue of the de-identified store and forward interaction, there is little impetus, however, for a referring doctor to relay progress. And so as we've heard a number of times um, with uh, some of these store and forward teledermatology services, knowing the actual outcome of each case has been a challenge. The majority of the cases referred to the program were noted to be for acute dermatoses. The doctor specifically identified the patient of being of Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander origin in 4% of the cases. The average age of the patient was noted to be 35, and about a third of the cases submitted to the program were for paediatric issues. Interestingly, given our population's huge burden of skin cancer, comparatively few referrals are made for advice regarding diagnosis or management of suspected neoplastic lesions. There is Australia-wide use of the program. However, the majority of cases do come from Queensland and New South Wales, partly perhaps because the service was first initiated in Queensland and Dr Muir is better known around Brisbane and, and, uh, and that's where the service was founded. But also perhaps as well, there's a much greater concentration of uh, regional centres based throughout the eastern side of Australia when compared to the west. So to help delineate case outcomes a little bit further after this ordered from 2012. Earlier this year, all cases submitted between February and April, that was 118 in total, were the, the referring GP was sent a, a survey two months after the case had been submitted. And we received 52 responses out of 118, which actually we thought was quite good for an emailed out survey. The median distance for all these GPs to their nearest dermatologist was noted to be 235 kilometres, but particularly interestingly, the mean distance was noted to be 351. And we found it particularly exciting to see that almost half of the referrals to the service came from ACRAM trainees or GP trainees who are obviously much more au fait or familiar with the online resources provided by their college. Certainly more than half of these cases were reported to have been resolved locally with no further management needed. There were a proportion, a proportion where it was still too early to tell. 4% didn't show up for follow-up and about 10% needed to be referred on for face-to-face -face management. So this is the start of a process that I think will continue to be followed through to try to look a little more into case outcomes uh, from cases submitted to, this, to the uh, service. So moving on to some of the educational aspects of the program, this is the case condition encyclopedia. There are over 400, uh, excuse me, 570 cases that have been put together based upon real submissions to the program. They can be viewed as an A to Z list, like you can see here, and reference when the dermatologists reply to cases, say, we'll look at case number 152 or case number 457 for further advice. The way the cases are structured 
is uh, such that they can click on a condition. Like I said, they can view this by number rather than looking up uh, the particular name of a condition. And they can learn about the condition in an in intuitive and thoughtful fashion. So they can go into the case, they can look at some pictures, they can have the opportunity to think about how to describe the lesions, they can think about different, different differentials that this may represent. Then they can have a think about appropriate investigations treatment and then have a think about appropriate follow-up and particularly also when to refer. The process we believe encourages ongoing self-directed professional development. There are over 50 clinicopathological correlation cases, each featuring a clinical vignette with associated histopathology, correlating the clinical presentation with the histology of the case. There are over 450 dermoscopy case examples as well, similar instruction uh, in structure to the case condition encyclopedia. And you can also view these as an A to Z list or blinded um, by case number. You can also look up in the A to Z list a particular dermoscopic pattern too, if you wanted to learn a little bit more about what arborizing ves uh, vessels are or what a blue grade ovoid nest is. And there'll be articles on these things that you can read just specifically about that pattern. About three quarters of the cases that are online uh, in the case condition encyclopedia have an associated quiz that tests the key points of the case. And fellows of the college, so uh, fellows of ACRIM, can accrue CPD points for attempting these quiz quizzes to renew their accreditation. There are written and video tutorials on lots of different things, including basic clinical activities such as taking a skin history, doing a full skin examination, performing biopsies, cryotherapy, curatage, through to more advanced techniques such as biopsy of the contra bowl of the upper eyelid. Other topics such as itch in the elderly, acne, acne treatment, uh, the clinical approach to topical steroid use and also the use of uh, pharmacological agents like Epidex are all provided on the website. Now generally Australian GPs are expected to and will perform simple skin procedures such as biopsies and simple skin excisions. But there are some, uh, particularly those in more isolated areas and those with more surgical experience who will often practice more advanced techniques so that their uh, patients within the comfort boundaries of their practitioner and their patient um, have the opportunity to have their lesions definitively dealt with locally. New to, well, effectively this year, December last year, uh, a new forum, so a case submission forum separate to the case condition, uh, the, the dermatology <laughs> submitted case library was started, hosted by Dr. Dan Kennedy, a Brisbane-based plastic and reconstructive surgeon, where some of these more isolated general practitioners who do have surgical skills um, and would like to have the opportunity to offer their patient the, um, the chance to have their lesions dealt with are able to submit cases where they would like to have a bit of reassurance about how to go about managing a case, what techniques they might want to use, what margins they want to use, what closures may be appropriate, and also whether or not if this is something that should be referred. Cases discussed are, involve the topics that I've just discussed. And, uh, and so far this year, there have been over 40 cases that have been addressed throughout the program. Also this year, we've seen the addition of a series of live online interactive lectures that give the opportunity for subscribers to the program to log in and participate in interactive discussions about various dermatological topics. So four sessions have been run this year, partly based upon the new expertise added to the program. So one on paediatric eczema management run by Dr. Rachel Foster and one on principles of acne management and acne mimic disorders as well, also host hosted by Dr. Foster. There have also been two sessions run on advanced skin surgery as well. They run on Blackboard Collaborate and allow everyone to log in and participate in the discussion. Now, I don't really have enough time to show you a clip, but this is a brief example of one of the cases that they had discussed about an elderly gentleman in a rural Queensland town. So he it would be in the order of 14 to 15 hours drive from Brisbane who had two ulcerated lesions on his ear. The superior lesion had been previously biopsied by another practitioner to show moderately differentiated SCC and the posterior lesion had not been biopsied yet. And they had an interactive discussion with participants asking questions about the types of biopsy they would perform, how to go about these things and reference was made to the learning materials on the site as well. The generalists then went on in, in conjunction with the plastic surgeon to describe 
the next step in management. And in this case, a wedge excision was opted for for the superior lesion or biopsy of the posterior lesion. Unfortunately, the wedge excision showed an involved posterior margin, and there was further discussion about how to go about appropriate management of this patient. This generalist has quite a lot of uh, surgical experience, and so he, he gave, I guess, a, an exhibition of how this case was dealt with, and discussions about alternative ways uh, it could be dealt with were um, addressed by the plastic surgeon too. The generalist made the point that he had travelled 120 kilometres from his regional area to the local town where this fellow lived so that this lesion could be dealt with locally. And an emphasis at all stages of the discussion is, is uh, placed upon finding the simplest way to, um, to clear this gentleman's disease. So showing you all the facets of this growing and diverse online platform is very difficult in such a short amount of time. But I hope you can appreciate that it's a very well-loved service, not only because of the fact that it offers the opportunity for people to, for doctors to get help with their patients quickly, but also because there's such a large emphasis on education. Now, finally as well, I guess it's worth mentioning that GPs in Australia who generally charge for their time in uh, increments and receive government rebates uh, on this basis currently do not have a, a rebate to um, compensate them for the time to put together a store and forward teledermatology referral. There are item numbers in Australia for GPs and specialists to offer live video conferencing services, but not for store and forward at this stage. This may be changing in the near future, but this, uh, but this, is still have been, this has been a challenge. Um, and as I discussed before, one of the main challenges for the program too is that the outcome is often unknown. So we put together a very brief video just to highlight or put into context a little bit of what I've discussed today. And uh, I can have a little talk about questions at the end if you like. Telederm provides online education and consultational services in dermatology for rural and remote doctors. The idea for it came from my experiences providing a visiting dermatology service to places like Mackay, Longreach and Mount Isa. Broadly speaking, we wanted to provide a site that would allow ready access to education in all aspects of dermatology as well as specific patient advice. This needed to be available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week and be user friendly. We wanted it to be interesting and to meet the needs of users at any stage of their career, so from medical students upwards. Hello, I'm Bruce Chater. I'm a rural doctor in Queensland, a little pointy bit on the right-hand side of Australia. I live 600 kilometres from Brisbane, which is where our nearest dermatologist is. So for our patients, often the, those patients will feel that a dermatological problem is a minor problem and not worth that trip to Brisbane. It's really hard to convince them sometimes to go that distance to get it solved and they'll just say it's okay and they'll put up with it. What Telederm's done for me is it's allowed me to get a diagnosis straight away for those patients and then we can often treat them on site. So for them it means an enormous difference. It means that they've got a better quality of life, they haven't got their dermatological condition, they haven't been away from their family, they haven't had to leave their business, they haven't had to leave their kids. So for us, Telederm is just a fabulous, fabulous service that really makes sure that our rural patients get an equal service to our patients in the cities. Well, hi, my name's Min Kong. I'm a uh, doctor with the Royal Flying Doctor Service of Australia. The city is um, one of Australia's iconic uh, medical institutions. We've been around for over 80 years and it provides uh, emergency but also primary health care services to remote Australia, to the outback of Australia. Um, and I work in Queensland, so my particular base is in Mount Isa, which is in a very remote part of the state. It's in the northwest corner of the state. We're about a thousand kilometres from the nearest tertiary hospital on the coast, and that's Townsville. So any uh, dermatology services are only located there. New flying doctors who come to the service, um, you know, they might not know, you know, how to refer people for dermatology, but I instantly tell them about this service. So I find a lot of our new doctors uh, do find it useful that they know that, you know, they ask me, well, how do we get a dermatology opinion? I say, this is the best way. And uh, we often get um, the right answer within a 24 uh, hour period. So.
it's an online community essentially of learners and experts and practitioners in dermatology who 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 who, who collectively want to improve um, that uh, practice of dermatology out there in remote Australia, well, in Australia in general, but certainly in remote Australia, and and that's what they do. So.